today I will, I will try to uh, answer the question how computers change our brains and the question can computers uh, cause mental disorders or neurological disorders? So I will, I, I, I'm going to say it right now, the answer is yes, yes. <laughs> But as I said, I have good news and bad news, so don't worry. Uh, actually, everything, uh, too much of everything is bad, as, w as we will find out today. Okay, so, uh, uh, another thing I, I need to say, there is one rule during my uh, presentations. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. During uh, uh, my speech, uh, you, you don't have to even raise your hand, just say, hey, you, stop, I have a question. Okay, so um, our body is amazing, but it is um, today medicine is uh, so advanced that most of our organs are irreplaceable. So, for example, I may have a kidney damage, a heart damage, um, liver, lungs, pancreas damage, but uh, it's not a bad news for me because uh, there are amazing surgeons that can perform. Um, kidney transplant, cornea transpa transplant, skin tra transplant, marrow transplant, blood transplant, but there is one organ that we cannot transplant. And the answer is the brain, of course. Actually, it's a little bit silly because even if uh, some, someday, even if we were able to tra transplant the brain, we, we would transplant, transplant the brain into the body or the body to the brain, considering that we are our brain. My brain is talking to your brains right now. Nice brains. <laughs> okay, uh, it's a little bit selfish because considering that I am my brain, uh, and saying that the brain is the most important organ that we have is a little, a little bit selfish because it's according to the brain. And, uh, and also this presentation is about the brain and the brain is presenting the presentation about the brain and it's selfish as well. But your brains w will like. Okay, a little bit about the brain. Uh, by the way, this is my brain scan, uh, CT scan, so say hi to my brain. It's talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. It's how you compliment. It's how you compliment a brain scientists. You see, nice brain. Okay, so uh, the brain uh, represents only two percent of our body weight, whereas it receives fifteen percent uh, of cardiac output, twenty percent of total body oxygen consumption, and twenty-five percent of um, uh, total body glucose uh, utilization. So uh, it's small, but it takes it all, actually. Uh, and uh, the brain consists of approximately 86 billion neurons, and each neuron is able to create uh, 10,000 neuronal con connections with other neurons. So multiply these two numbers, and you will have the view uh, about uh, how complex this machine is, because the brain is actually a machine, a big computer, and uh, a lot of money is invested right now uh, to uh, create, to build computers that are able to uh, simulate um, brain func the brain's functioning. For example, um, Human Brain Project uh, obtained uh, 1 billion euros from the European Commission, European Commission uh, to, to um, accomplish this mission. Uh, I need to say that we are not doing very well in this area right now, <laughs> but um, I hope that uh, as uh, our programming tools and our technology is getting more and more advanced, uh, we will accomplish this mission. Okay. So... Uh, Right now, I will uh, outline a little bit of apocalyptic vision of our future. So, according to a World Health Organization, one in four people in the world will be affected by mental or neurological disorders 
at some point of their life. So neurological disorders and mental disorders are brain disorders. So something is happening with our brain. So brain disorders are Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, uh, schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, and many, many more. And it's a very, very bad news because considering that we are our brains, we are, we are actually losing ourselves. And the worst news is that we cannot say accurately what causes brain disorders, how to diagnose accurately brain, brain disorders, and how to treat them. So, yeah, it's very, very bad. And uh, another bad news, that people with brain disorders live appro approximately 25 years less than normal people. So 25 years is a little bit long. So it's a very crucial task to um, research the brain and find um, some new cures. Okay, another bad news. <laughs> European... Uh, European uh, cost uh, in 2010 of all um, brain disorders is uh, almost 800 billion. 800 billion. It's a lot. So, pl <laughs> so please uh, look at other diseases, cardiovascular diseases, 192, cancer, 20, uh, 200 billion, diabetes. 83 billions, and so on, so on. So all these diseases cost less than brain disorders in total. So brain costs us more than our whole body. No, uh, uh, actually, 800 uh, uh, billions um, consist of medical uh, issues, non-medical issues, direct, indirect. Because, for example, uh, if um, uh, I have a stroke and I'm uh, working and I have a stroke and uh, I cannot work anymore, then my uh, whole family... Um, is affected by it. So, for example, uh, the, um, uh, my, my husband, for example, uh, will have to uh, take care of me so he can not work as well and the economic situation of the country and the Europe. But, but yes, it's, it's a problem and it looks like this. Uh, okay. Um, the brain is changing all the time. Even right now, I am changing your brains. Physically. I'm doing physical changes to your brains. Ha ha. <laughs> and I can measure that. If, if we uh, go to my laboratory, I, I, I would be able to uh, measure these changes. Because um, decades ago, people thought that the brain is developing only um, throughout the course of childhood. But actually, our brains are able to change uh, even in um, late adulthood, and that's what we call neuroplasticity. And throughout the course of, of our life, uh, there are new um, neuron, neuron cells that are created in several uh, places uh, in the brain. So um, it's very important because um, have you seen a, a baby elephant? A baby elephant is born, and it, after it is born, it, it can stand up and walk, uh, and I haven't seen a baby, human baby, uh, just after it is born, stand up and walk. Actually, it takes one year. So why? Why an elephant can walk just after it is born, and we cannot? Because... <laughs> no. <laughs> So actually, uh, uh, the baby cannot crawl after it is born as well. So, sorry? <laughs> sorry? No, no, it is because um, I will give you an answer. <laughs> 
No, it is actually because of uh, the fact that uh, the elephant receives some information um, uh, uh, already. So, I am because for for example, we don't have to learn how to cough or how to breathe. It is deep in our brains. It's a it's just like a protocol that we re receive from our uh, ancestors, for, from our. Uh, uh, evolution uh, relatives and, and so on and so on. Uh, and uh, we don't receive um, as much information as, for example, um, animals, uh, because animal brain is not that plastic as the human brain. So the human brain uh, is actually acquiring a lot of information and it is acquiring a lot of skills throughout the course of um, uh, the, the life. And um, it, is, uh, it is good. I w okay. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, because the baby's head is usually too heavy to, for the baby to get up, so it wouldn't make sense for it to learn to walk. Uh, could you... Uh, I said that the baby's head is usually too heavy for the baby to get up, so it wouldn't make sense for the baby to learn to walk. Okay, but uh, elephant may have the same problems with, you know, it's, it's, it's heavy as well, and... Uh... Yeah, but baby can swim after But because it is actually uh, immersed in the... Uh... <laughs> I don't know, I am not a zoologist, but I will find out. But, you know, uh, because a baby is immersed in the fluid uh, in the, uh, um, before it is born. So, uh, actually, we have some time to learn before we are born. And it is good. Okay, um, uh, let's go on, <laughs> let's go on, because uh, I have a little bit more to tell. Um, okay. Our brains are changing. We, I think we all agree. Um, and um, the most important thing that you should remember is neurons that fire together, wire together. This is the mantra of all the scientists that research neural plasticity. So, for example, because uh, I think you know that there's, there are some electrical activities in the brain, impulses, uh, uh, and we can measure that with EEG, uh, and we have brain waves, patterns uh, of um, brain activity. And actually, these impulses are um, representing uh, neurons that talk to each other. So uh, they're, they talk to each other, they wire together, they create new connections, and... Um, uh, and it is um, uh, achieved by firing together in the same time. Okay. So this was uh, a little bit of beginning, uh, and uh, we will use this information to uh, analyze brain disorders in people who deal with screens and computers a lot. So, okay, Dracula hormone. What is Dracula hormone? Is sometimes um, melatonin is sometimes called Dracula hormone. Why? Because it is activated, it is produced when it is dark. Uh, melatonin is essential for us to sleep. Melatonin um, is produced uh, as soon as the lights um, are turned off. And uh, so uh, let's um, trace this. Uh, diagram, uh, and for example, throughout the day when there is a little bit of sunlight, uh, the level of melatonin is uh, relatively low. So we don't want to sleep, so no melatonin. And um, uh, around 8 p.m., the level of melatonin raises, and uh, it achieves its peak around uh, midnight, uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., and then uh, when uh, there is a time to wake up, 7 uh, a.m. Uh, or 8 a.m., and so on and so on, the level of melatonin drops. And it's very important because, for example, when there are some hmm, uh, 
moody days, dark days, uh, we are sleepy, because there is an information. So, for example, retina in our um, eyes is um, not stimulated by the um, uh, appropriate amount of, uh, amount of light. So there is no um, stimulation of the place in the brain called hypothalamus that stimulates another part of the brain called um, pineal gland, uh, which is uh, responsible for producing hormones, including the Dracula hormone. Okay, why it is important? It is important because uh, if, for example, you want to go to sleep at 1 a.m. and you are working on your computer at midnight or midnight 30, you are stimulated with huge amount of light, your eyes that are sending information to hypothalamus and then to pineal gland produ uh, do not produce melatonin because there is light. So, and no melatonin, no sleep. So then we go to bed, we want to sleep, and we cannot. And this is a problem. Why it is a problem? It is a problem because this may lead to uh, insomnia, sleep deprivation in general, and the uh, disease called um, delayed sleep phase, phase disorder when we are totally awake uh, during the night and sleepy during the day. And um, there are some research, uh, researchers that prove that two hours of iPad use at uh, maximum brightness was enough to suppress people's normal activity of uh, release of melatonin. So um, actually, we don't have to uh, work on the computer uh, a lot to um, be affected by this uh, melatonin mechanism. And problems with sleep um, are uh, very important, uh, but some of you may not uh, feel that right now. But let's consider that, for example, problems with sleep are crucial to the development of other diseases, such as depression, anxiety, mood disorders, problems with memory, and suicidal behaviors. There, there is a huge amount of research that proves that sleep deprivation is uh, one of the leading causes of uh, suicidal behavior. And um, people um, who don't sleep enough and don't sleep well uh, are predisposed to um, depression. So we have a part of our answers, uh, of our answers um, uh, whether it is possible to acquire a, a brain disease uh, because of the computer. Uh, okay, so, um, but uh, I was uh, talking about melatonin, but, um, okay, sorry. Uh, we have a microphone. Uh, actually, there is no difference uh, because they are um, affecting our retina the same way. There is light, there is stimulation of the retina in, the, uh, in my eye. The stimulation stimulates hypothalamus, hypothalamus st stimulates uh, pineal gland, and uh, the release of melatonin is happening or, or not. So every screen is bad. <laughs> uh, okay. Before uh, going to sleep, should I stop using computer screens and light? Actually, there is no uh, such research to indicate exactly, but I think that you should stop two hours before at least two hours. Uh, one more question. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that I have a lot of bad news today. Um, uh, one more question. Uh, so there are several apps uh, for laptops or mobile devices that uh, make the screen more orange-red, uh, like Flux or Lux for Android devices, and they advertise that they, uh, because 
the emitted light is not the blue bluish light, but more orangish, like a natural, uh, you know, candle light. It, it helps sleeping better. Like, actually, not sleeping better, but not causing this problem. I, is it I, false? I, I, everything or? <laughs> The answer is, uh, actually the favorite answer of all the scientists, it depends. Uh, because it is true that blue light uh, has a greater effect of the retina and it sti stimulates it um, uh, more. But or orange light stimulates retina as well. So um, maybe uh, it has... Um, uh, less effect, but bad news is that uh, it may cause uh, such problems. One more question: What about the frequency of the screens? Is that does? It Sorry, where, where you are? Okay. <laughs> does it make any difference, or does it make? Uh, does it, is it important? It's less important probably right now because they are so pretty much high, but. Uh, the frequency of the refresh rate of the skin is... Uh, yes, also, uh, I, I need to say there is no such research, so I don't want to make any assumptions, estimate, estimations. Uh, um, I, don't want to, I don't want to lie, <laughs> and I don't want to uh, pass false information. I think that it doesn't matter, because it, it's all about the stimulation of the brain. So. Retina is stimulated when, when we see. So no matter if, I, for example, if I have my eyes closed, but if you um, um, direct your uh, light uh, to, 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 into my eyes, I will see some spots, white spots, and it is stimulation uh, of the retina. What about blind people? Blind people? Yeah. Uh, but what kind of blindness? The eye blindness or brain blindness? Because... Uh, Eye blind, uh, they don't see so. They, they, they are in the dark all the time, so I don't think that uh, screens. Uh... How they Sorry? How they sleep is regulated then? Oh, uh, there are um, some uh, mechanism associ mechanisms associated with uh, circadian clock, uh, but you know, there are some. Um, Proves there are some research uh, researchers that uh, provided evidences that uh, um, actually p blind people are not 100% blind. So, for example, they don't um, they, they, they see black everywhere. They, they they live in the dark, but actually there is some sort of simulation. Uh, and also there are um, other. Um, uh, uh, things associated with that. For example, uh, if we are living in a society that lives um, in the day and goes to, to sleep uh, uh, in the night, actually it, uh, um, uh, esta it establishes uh, our circadian clock just by the, um, you know, because I'm doing this at uh, this hour and this hour and, and so on and so on. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let's go on. I'm extremely happy that you are asking questions. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to some uh, direct changes, direct changes to the brain. So, for example, gray, gray matter atrophy. So, uh, um, neurons, um, cr uh, the gray matter consists of neurons. Uh, and um, uh, for your information, uh, white matter is, um, uh, consists of uh, axons. These are uh, connections from one neuron to another. Uh, and so, okay, multiple studies uh, have shown um, that gray matter uh, is uh, shrinking and uh, is uh, losing its volume. Uh, because of the processing uh, of, um, because of seeing screens, because of dealing with computers. But it is hard to, because, you know, we should um, differentiate between using screen in general, uh, including phones, uh, TV, and so on, so on, using internet, using computer to work, and, uh, and many, many more. But I will um, talk um, 
a little bit more general uh, because I have only uh, uh, one hour and right now even less. Okay, so um, here you can see uh, um, uh, some data from the research uh, from Chiba University. And uh, the yellow spots uh, on the brain graphics uh, are representing uh, places in the brain that uh, uh, are affected by um, uh, gray matter loss. And um, these places are uh, considered to be directly associated with such um, functions uh, as uh, attention, working memory, um, long uh, organization of memory, uh, analytical thinking, and so on, so on. Uh, and the um, scatter plots um, below are representing um, the loss, uh, the, the thickness of, uh, um, of the gray matter and, um, uh, uh, and how it is changing throughout the course of the um, computer use. And we can see that um, the more uh, we are using computer and screens, the uh, thicker our uh, gray matter is. So it is really important because considering that in the, um, that um, most of research associated with uh, gray matter loss associated with schizophrenia shows that um, similar changes are occurring in uh, mental disorders. Actually, it's, um, um, uh, I, I think it's a weak uh, association between to the, uh, these uh, issues, but um, the loss of gray matter is the loss of cognitive function. So too much computers uh, are uh, com uh, computers are causing gray matter loss, uh, and therefore they are causing cognitive function um, impairment, and therefore they may cause some uh, neurological disorders. Um, because for example, in um, schizophrenia, there is uh, 20, uh, up to 20% uh, uh, gray matter loss. Uh, and uh, for example, in Alzheimer's disease, uh, there are, is even more gray matter, gray matter loss. Of course, good news is that um, it's not like I'm using computer, therefore I will have Alzheimer's disease because uh, it's a little bit more, more complicated. There are genetic um, uh, issues, uh, uh, environmental issues, but I would like to discuss uh, um, something that is really important in psychiatry right now because considering that, uh, for example, schizophrenia is um, caused by genes, we don't know that uh, for uh, sure, but uh, it's uh, most probable that uh, schizophrenia is caused by genes, uh, impaired genes. Actually, the uh, uh, myriad of genes uh, and mixtures of genes that are um, affected. And uh, the good news for schizophrenic is that schizophrenics is that uh, they may have schizophrenic genes, but there is a huge possibility that they won't uh, uh, develop um, a schizophrenia in their lives because the um, schizophrenia uh, genesis is, uh, uh, consists of environmental factors and uh, genetic factors. So... Are you, sure, are you sure this is uh, connected with uh, screen time and not gaming? But because gaming is a special experience where you have a disconnect be, uh, between uh, what you see and uh, what are your feelings. Because you're sitting in a place but are seeing screen moving. So this is a very special experience. It doesn't really relate to screen time. Um, yes, because, you know, um, we will have another um, uh, examples of how especially gaming affect uh, brain uh, gray matter thickness. But um, it's a spoiler a little bit, but um, there is some, if, if we play games um, uh, in uh, um, some, so, some uh, amount of time, 
it may cause uh, some benefits, but uh, if we play games um, a little longer, it is uh, treated as normal screen time, uh, and uh, it, it it causes it may cause uh, gray matter uh, um, shrinking. So it's a little bit a, a paradox because I can see your face, I can see your, uh, what you think. Uh, Biologists, yeah. You, you, Sorry. You, you should, they, they should remember, the, at least if you want to discuss the result in terms of screen time, at least uh, you should do some variation, you know, uh, uh, structure this uh, so that uh, they account for the effect of uh, gaming. Uh, I think I know, uh, I know your point. Uh, but uh, because uh, but why gaming? Why why? Uh... Okay, but gaming is like screen time. The game is gaming. Screen time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see this in the For example, developers who you spend a lot of time in front of the screen. Uh, sorry, because uh, looking at non-moving text. Okay, so as I said. We should uh, differentiate between uh, you, uh, seeing static text, uh, gaming, uh, internet use, uh, screen time in general, including uh, TV, uh, smartphones, and so on and so on. But there is not such research to differentiate it um, and uh, uh, in exact way to, uh, to, to answer your question. I am really sorry that I cannot provide exact information. But um, uh, right now, I am talking about uh, the exposure to light, to, to the ex exposure uh, to light of the... Why do you connect this with computers? What's the difference in exposure to light uh, between watching a screen and simply doing a light bulb? Because why, we... Why do we connect this? Because uh, when, for example, you have uh, a monitor in the front of your... Um, in the front of your uh, face, uh, and uh, there is um, a little um, space between your face, your eyes, and the monitor, and uh, um, also uh, the natural light, the sunlight, is different than the light of the monitor, uh, but the space between your eyes and the monitor is uh, really important, and the way you look at it. So, for example, doctors say, um, that uh, we should look at the monitor to, to, to diminish the effect of the light of the monitor. We should look at it from the top, actually. So, for example, looking from, uh, from um, the downside, it's really um, uh, detrimental to our brain, looking from the, uh, this side or this side. So, uh, it is important how we look at the monitor, what is the space between your face, your eyes and the monitor, and uh, the type of light uh, on the monitor. Uh, another question? Yeah, very, very quick one. Uh, is there any data uh, that pertains to uh, the ratio of uh, how uh, screen time affects you uh, in uh, neurological diseases versus, uh, for example, genetic factors? No, there is not such uh, research. Uh, it, it is, um, you know, uh, not... Uh, uh, many scientists want to research that. Uh, it, actually, when before I was uh, before this conference, I was uh, searching through PubMed or Google Scholar to find some um, publications, and they are a little known about this. So that's why um, I'm underlying this fact that there is. Uh, I know the weakness uh, weaknesses of these uh, research, uh, researchers. Uh, uh, I know the re uh, weaknesses of these data, especially as you are a computer scientist. Uh, but um, we we should generalize. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but maybe I will uh, write a grant about it and I will start. Maybe you will inspire me to, to, to apply for a grant. Okay. Uh, let's move on. I, uh, I, I think that I want... Uh, uh, 
say everything what I want, uh, wanted to say uh, today, but uh, it's amazing that you're asking so many questions. You're my favorite type of people that I uh, speak to. <laughs> really, okay. Uh, another thing, loss of integrity of the brain, white matter. So as I said, white matter is, um, um, consists of uh, connections uh, between neuron to neuron, but there is a specific type of uh, connection uh, because there are two main types of connections uh, between neurons. There are um, uh, uh, accents, and accents uh, are um, connections that um, provide information, information from the neuron to another neuron. Uh, and um, uh, so, for example, the information in axon and the axon can uh, travel only uh, from the neuron to another neuron. So, no uh, different way. Okay, so. Here you see the um, um, green uh, spots um, show the portion of uh, um, white matter that is not affected um, in, uh, in the relation to healthy individuals, in the relation to people who uh, don't play uh, computer games or don't uh, expose themselves uh, to the monitors uh, uh, a lot. And the red... Um, spots are these places where um, there is um, um, shrinking of uh, accents of uh, white matter observed. And, and uh, as you may uh, see, uh, it is in the, um, the majority of uh, the loss uh, is observed, observed in the frontal lobes of the brain. Uh, and uh, as I said early, earlier, um, Frontal lobe is associated with attention, with um, analytical planning, with um, um, with uh, uh, memory, working memory. But um, as I uh, um, observed today, you uh, really want to me to differentiate between uh, reading static text and gaming and so on, so on. So, for example, in this study, it is. Um, uh, it includes um, uh, uh, also the uh, some uh, indir indirect uh, features of the internet, and uh, by saying that, I say, for example, uh, how, for example, Google affects our uh, analytical thinking, and so on, so on. I will uh, explain that um, uh, later in this presentation. So. As I said, uh, neurons that wi fire together wire together and therefore talk to each other. So if we were um, one huge brain, and if, for example, uh, a man from this uh, area of the brain uh, uh, is, was speaking with a man from this area, or women, uh, this area uh, of, the, uh, of the brain, uh, a connection uh, between these two um, men or neurons uh, would appear. And uh, so a neuron wire, uh, fires, and at the same time another neuron fires, and connection is created, and uh, the more information is uh, traveling between two, these two um, neurons. And actually this is... a. Um, a very simplistic model of uh, the creating new connections between neurons because I also we may, ha we may have populations of neurons that, for example, um, have uh, the same frequency uh, as another population of neurons, so group of people. Uh, and uh, also these uh, um, uh, brain waves may uh, um, show phase synchronization. So, for example, when we have um, 10 hertz uh, activity and, uh, in one part of the brain and another 10 hertz activity in another part of the brain, and if um, uh, phase synchronization between two canals of EEG occur, uh, occurs, um, uh, then uh, there is a strong wiring, strong uh, creation of new neuronal connections uh, in the brain. So, so this diagram shows, uh, please uh, look at um, A, and uh, 
here you can see a phase synchronization. So we have two canals. You, you, you have seen probably EEG, electrodes on the brain and so on. You have seen? And one electrode uh, uh, shows uh, one canal, oh, 20 units. <laughs> uh, one kernel of, uh, of on the EEG, and it, it is seen like this. And another electrode may uh, show uh, another kernel, and um, when phase synchronization occurs, um, there is neural plasticity. This process occurs as well. So this is the sign that these two uh, regions of the brain are talking to each other. Please look at BC. Here we have uh, the exact um, uh, ex uh, representation of this process. Uh, why it is important? Because a uh, recent study uh, at MIT uh, showed that um, the um, synchronization of frequencies, phase synchronization, is directly associated with the cre uh, creation of new memories. Uh, so when the two, um, as I said, when the two areas of the brain, so for example, hippocampus and renal cortex, want to exchange information, and uh, these, two, this, these two particular um, uh, areas are dire directly associated with the creation of new memories, especially long-term ter memory, they need to synchronize these, they, their activity. Um, wh why I am talking <laughs> about this? Because um, uh, if we... Uh, 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 consider that um, uh, exposure to light of the monitor, screen time, internet use, and sorry that I don't differentiate <laughs> between these, uh, um, but if uh, uh, it causes um, uh, disconnectivity in the brain, uh, there are less association in our brain. Uh, I, I, will, I would like to do an experiment right now to engage you a little bit, uh, because um, I see somebody sleeping <laughs> a little bit. Uh, okay, um, right now I would like all of you to close your eyes. All of you. Uh, all of you. <laughs> all of you. All of you. Okay, so... Listen to this uh, recording carefully. You too. <laughs> Please. Yes, close your eyes. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. Uh, uh, you can open your eyes. What have you heard? Ba, ba. Ba. Okay, okay. Uh, once again, right now with opened eyes. Ba 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 ba. That. Okay. So why? Why we uh, uh, have heard um, uh, ba ba at the beginning and then da da. It is the same recording, believe me. <laughs> it, is, uh, it is because uh, our brain uses the same wires to um, manipulate different areas of the brain's functioning. So, for example, our vision directly affect, uh, affects uh, our hearing. And our hearing directly affects our vision because the information travels in the same wires. Uh, and uh, it is important because uh, when you see me, you see my posture, you see my body, and you can hear me. And you don't have to think about uh, when, where I am walking and then uh, stop thinking about this and thinking about what I am saying. You're, you are doing this... Uh, um, at the same time, because uh, your brain is uh, working um, on many are areas um, in the same time. And it is extremely important. So, for example, that, uh, that is uh, why disconnectivity associated with 
um, too much um, uh, screen exposure may harm our attention uh, and uh, our ability to um, manipulate uh, different areas of the brain's functioning. Okay. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, uh, say a little bit about um, different areas of the computer use. So, for example, because I was talking about light, uh, exposure of the monitor, uh, and computers in general, but um, I would like to talk a little bit about how um, specific computer tools affect our life. So, uh, let's talk about Google. Sorry, Google. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, um, so, decades ago, years ago, we had to know where to find information, where to find uh, um, specific books, because you cannot, because you cannot know everything, or you sh you you, you uh, had to know uh, where to find the person that knows something. So, for, exa for example, my daddy knows how to hunt, or my mommy knows how to uh, cook. So, I, uh, so I'm making associations. So, uh, okay, so if I want to uh, create, a, uh, organize a party, and I need uh, somebody to hunt for me, uh, the, uh, <laughs> and I need uh, my mommy to uh, cook, so I need to make a plan, I need to do some uh, analytical thinking, uh, make my uh, own reasoning. But in the uh, era of Google, we just, you know, Google, I'm putting some information, and I want the information right now, right here, in the form that I expect, uh, expect it. And this is extremely harmful, especially um, when we talk about teenagers, because they want information right now, right here, in the form that I wish. Um, uh, whereas um, our grandfathers, our fathers, our mothers, and so on and so on, uh, had to create their own reasoning, their plan, to, uh, they, their... Um, uh, their um, own uh, reasoning to approach the answer. And that's how it is harming our uh, brain. And uh, also I talked about this because uh, um, the place in the brain that creates long-term memory is called hippocampus. It is also associated with spatial uh, orientation. Uh, so spatial orientation actually is associated with memory. And that's uh, why we should, when, for example, people who um, uh, compete in the competitions, uh, uh, memory competitions, uh, memorizing a sequence of many, many cards or many, many numbers, uh, are actually creating a palace of memory. So they are imagining moving through the palace and uh, looking at different cards in this palace, but they are moving. And that's how they can memorize uh, such sequences of cards or numbers or faces and so on and so on because of the um, uh, association between space and facts and memories. Uh, and um, uh, that is why uh, I think uh, use of computers, too much use, because we, don't, we can't gener generalize uh, too much, uh, but it may harm our reasoning. And that's why probably um, these specific um, uh, areas of the brain, the frontal lobe, are um, observed to uh, have uh, gray matter loss. Sorry? I, I have a feeling that this question will, will be hard. <laughs> <laughs> um. The question is, uh, couldn't it be just a matter of specialization in the sense that memory is uh, important, but if you use less mem memory, you've got more over to use for uh, higher reasoning. So uh, why would Google be bad? Because your memory usage would diminish, but your processing power would increase, probably. No. Um... <laughs> No, because, uh, you know, uh, I think that the process of uh, acquiring information from Google is uh, uh, less uh, complicated that acqu than acquiring uh, information from books or from people. Sure, but, but we do different stuff instead of searching for information. We, we use different pathways, for example, 
for reasoning about this information that we found. I, yeah. I guess the, 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 the question is not uh, if, if the access to information makes you think less or if maybe, maybe it's just when you, you, know, you don't have to try hard, uh, as hard to get this information, you have some you know, CPU powers left to do something No, else. no. Uh, uh, there is not such thing that, uh, for example, brain is not working uh, in the way that, for example, we have some uh, power. And uh, if we use a little, uh, less power uh, here, then we can use uh, more power here. Actually, no. When brain doesn't use uh, an area, it's, it's uh, disappearing. It's... It's no, uh, actually, uh, because, uh, because you said important words, trying hard. Actually, trying hard uh, is uh, creating new connections. It's the way we create new um, uh, neuronal cells. And for example, um, if there is no uh, such, um, if, if we, um, if I'm memorizing things without uh, connecting, connecting it to um, space, uh, when I'm memorizing things uh, in, the sp in the space, let's say, I need to make more connections because I need to make connections associated with the memory. So, for example, that this, like, this is blue or this is what it is. <laughs> and that uh, this uh, uh, lays here. So, for example, uh, two connections or two, two cells, uh, that this is what it is and that this is... Uh, uh, laying here. So, for example, when I want to remember what was it, I'm remembering me standing here, walking like this, and looking at it. And I can see it in my mind. But if we want to just remember that this is what it is, I, it's really hard. And actually, um, accents are as well, um, uh, accents have a um, mielin sheath. It's a sheath that is... Um, uh, protecting an axon and it helps to in, for the information to travel faster and if there are more information associated with this specific cell then um, a neuronal sheath uh, ax, uh, mie myelin sheath is um, uh, is is bigger uh, and uh, so I hope that this answers your question Okay, uh, I think that I don't have much time. That uh, there's, uh, 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 okay. So uh, I have another uh, experiment, and I don't want to skip this because it's uh, important uh, in the relation to what I'm, what we are, we were uh, talking about. Uh, Uh, I don't think that making people skip food <laughs> is a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> okay, fine. So uh, let's stay in the subject of associations. I will show you uh, how it works. Uh, because, you know, science is experiment. Experiments are ex extremely important. Okay, so right in, uh, in a minute, I will um, uh, present some... Uh, images, photos, and stuff like this, uh, and uh, you will try to memorize them in the precise uh, uh, sequence. So one uh, image coming after another, and uh, in, the, um, uh, in this way, uh, exact way, you, you, you will have to memorize it. So please focus your attention, and uh, we will try to... I find out whether there is somebody uh, able to memorize everything. Okay. Ready? Okay, let's go. <laughs> okay, I don't usually do that, but I can start, start off again. But uh, it, it will be fast, so... Okay, so ready? Okay, is there anybody here or there that is able to tell what you have seen 
a minute ago here. But uh, uh, what, what types of things, and, and, you know? Uh, but but uh, so, sorry, uh, uh, I need one person. Any volunteer? Okay, so uh, please try. No, I, I can hear you, so... Uh. So, the rose, the horse, the lamp, a house, a girl on a bike, and then there was the kitchen, and then there was a market. But, uh, but you, you're not uh, speaking the, the right sequence, because, uh, they are, uh, I, uh, because uh, they are not following the, this way that you're telling me. Aha, uh -huh. okay, sorry. But it's then not like, uh, you know... I thought, I thought it was in this, that sequence. Okay. okay, so there were 10 uh, uh, items. Please tell me. So the rose, the horse, the lamp, the house, the, and the house, and then I think there was the bike with the lady, then the kitchen, and then the market. So I'm missing two at least. <laughs> okay, okay, so, okay, okay, okay. But. You, you say it's seven. Oh, so it's three, sorry. <laughs> I thought that. Oh, the. Oh, oh wow. So, I so okay, most rose, of horse, lamb, house, house lady, but kitchen, kitchen, market, and I skipped all those. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were unable, right? No, yes. <laughs> Actually, you've done the best uh, because I presented it uh, several times uh, to different type of communities and your score is the best. So congratulations. <laughs> but still, you haven't accomplished the mission. Okay, That's let's fun. try uh, another uh, approach. Sorry. You want to try it's, it's, it's you <laughs> microphone please oh isn't this about uh, working memory there's a theory that says you have uh, seven plus or minus yes, two you can remember actually, anyway whether you watch long tv hours or not Yes, uh, uh, actually uh, this is true. Um, uh, scientists estimate uh, that we are able to memorize, to um, uh, store uh, up to seven items in our working memory. So uh, uh, your data suits uh, our data. Uh, and, uh, but I will, would like to uh, try another approach because um, actually these uh, uh, images that you haven't... Um, uh, said uh, uh, there are in your brain, there are in our brains. So uh, let's try another approach. Uh, you will say um, uh, on what side of the uh, slide uh, there is an image that uh, appeared before, left or right. To 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 be clear, this is right. <laughs> this is left. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so you can see that uh, in the relation to other information, our brain is doing very well to, um, to uh, determine uh, what uh, uh, it remembers and what it doesn't remember. Uh, and that's why associations are extremely important to our memory, uh, and that's why connections between new neurons uh, are crucial to the uh, brain's functioning. And uh, going back to the point of our presentation, uh, here you have uh, the examples of some uh, researches um, uh, associated with this uh, um, 
issues. So, for example, uh, so, uh, there are some evidences that uh, Alzheimer's disease is associated with dis disconnection um, and the loss of, especially, of course, loss of gray matter and uh, are also the white matter that is extremely important to um, uh, make uh, neurons fire, fire together. And also neural synchrony that is um, uh, approached by uh, creating new connections uh, is associated with uh, um, impaired cogni cognition in schizophrenia. But uh, I think, uh, talking about schizophrenia, I think I haven't uh, uh, finished uh, my one thought, because uh, I think that somebody asked the uh, uh, a question because it's not like uh, I am pr programming our, I am using computer and therefore I will have schizophrenia. Because schizophrenia is a genetic issue. So for, but um, it is uh, to um, express the genes that is associated, that are associated, associated with schizophrenia, we need some environmental factors. So for example, consider two kids. One kid is living in the pathological family, and another kid is living in normal family. So, um, uh, no, one kid is having schizophrenia genes, and another is not having schizophrenia genes. But two kids uh, are um, uh, having uh, are living in a pathological family. So, for example, this kid that has schizophrenic genes and lives in the pathological family family will um, uh, develop schizophrenia because of environmental factors that affect genes, and the expression of genes is possible because of the factors that are uh, contributing to this expression. And the child that, um, for example, uh, ha has schizophrenic genes but lives in normal family, uh, in some way is schizophrenic because you have genes, but you won't develop it. And uh, considering that um, computers may lead to depression, anxiety, stress, um, uh, you know, um, because uh, sitting in one position for a long time and um, uh, the sense of isolation because of working at the com on the computer, for example, in co big companies, people work on com computers a lot uh, and they feel um, a, sen a sense of isolation. Uh, and uh, they may uh, develop uh, schizophrenia if, uh, if they are uh, having a schizophrenic genes because there are environmental factors contributing. So computers are not directly associated with uh, severe mental diseases as schizophrenia, but they are um, in the group of environmental factors that can contribute to the development of schizophrenia. That's why we should diminish the um, amount of time uh, of um, uh, the computer. So, for example, scientists um, uh, recommend uh, um, using less than five hours a day of computer for people who... <laughs> <laughs> Actually... Uh, <laughs> This, uh, this amount, uh, I know uh, your, your reaction is telling everything, but, <laughs> but uh, this is a threshold, actually. You, you, you are doing with computer, uh, computers as a computer scientist, so probably your situation is different. But um, considering people who are working in companies and uh, they are um, forced to work with computers, and for example, they have to work many hours, even after work, on the computer, and they have a sense uh, of isolation. They uh, have a lot of stress, and they um, develop depression, anxiety, and so on, so on. Uh, and that's why uh, we. Sh uh, that's why scientists recommend uh, for uh, employers to diminish uh, um, the amount spent on the computer uh, to around five hours. And I know that this is quite impossible in our. <laughs> Uh, era. Okay, um, I can see that uh, <laughs> we, we should uh, we should uh, finish. So uh, I will um, um, s talk a little bit faster right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> but you want me to stop? I will stop because I can stop right now. Oh, actually, it's depend on the audience. Okay. <laughs> Uh, ah, good news. Yes, we have good news, so we, we have to go. <laughs> uh, so, um, yes? Is there any uh, age range where uh, it's more risky for both of you? 
developing? Uh, for schizophrenia in general, uh, for schiz yes, um, around um, 15 years old to uh, 20 something, uh, this is the cr uh, crucial time to develop schizophrenia, but there are uh, some, for example, children who are born schizophrenic, so for example, they are developing schizophrenia from the young age, but it is really hard to uh, diagnose schizophrenia in kids uh, since um, kids uh, have imaginary friends and it's hard to differentiate whether it is associated with schizophrenia and uh, uh, imagination of uh, uh, a young individual. So um, another uh, research, uh, researcher's uh, research um, dopamine function in uh, people who uh, um, use too much computer, uh, cognitive functioning, uh, and uh, cortical thickness, as I said. <sighs> I'm sorry, I cannot stay more uh, uh, in, uh, at this slide, but... Um, uh, I have to go to good news. <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, there was a research who examined playing Super Mario and the brain. <laughs> and actually, there, um, uh, uh, there was a uh, gray matter development in these people uh, and the right uh, spots on the brains uh, up here are representing areas of the brain uh, that uh, reported um, some development and some benef uh, benefits of uh, uh, playing Super Mario because uh, uh, it, it helps attention, uh, it uh, helps um, our reasoning because, you know, um, it's, as I said, it's really hard uh, with, to, to, to differentiate games and, and screen time and so on, uh, but uh, in this research, uh, they played, I think, um, as I remember, about two hours a day of Super Mario. But I think, uh, and that's why they reported the development of gray matter. But I think if they um, would, play, uh, would have played uh, more, they uh, uh, would develop, um, uh, they would uh, report uh, um, neuronal loss. Uh, I Few information. I will speak faster. Just speak <laughs> uh, Another research: people uh, who with dyslexia uh, read faster uh, when disposed to um, some computer programs. Uh, improvement in eyesight: people who work with computers more actually are able to um, uh, see small details more clearly, uh, like uh, tiny writing, and also they perceive fine differences, uh, differences in contrast. And uh, stuff like this, so for example, perceiving uh, differences in contrast are the very first things to be impaired in dementia and Alzheimer's disease. So, good news. Uh, and also, young doctors with previous exposures um, to uh, gaming and uh, using computer uh, in general actually are, are doing fewer errors and uh, they are uh, diagnosing better. Um, especially surgeons are uh, more precise. And when, um, uh, actually there are uh, many uh, um, techniques, surgical techniques right now, for example, Da Vinci robot, which, uh, which, is actu which actually looks like a, a game when you have to um, uh, um, use a robot uh, and therefore you operate. Uh, and conclusion, computers are not that bad. It depends how we use them and how much we use them. Uh, and uh, also, uh, there is a researcher, a researcher at uh, University of uh, California, San Diego, Professor Vinogradov, that reported that using computer games improved schizophrenia cognitive function in schizophrenic patients. Patients. Uh, okay. We s need to. This oh, is the last slide. Actually. I just want to say. <laughs> I just want to say that too much of everything is, is bad, even too much of broccoli, even too much of water, even too much of physical activity. And uh, that's why we should just uh, uh, stay uh, reasonable 
uh, and responsible for this machine here. And qu any questions? <laughs> Okay, thank you.